Hello and welcome to Envision. I'm Deanne Conrad here with Dr. Brian Maher, our superintendent in the Sioux Falls Public Schools. And we have some exciting news in that we are moving forward with a computer science immersion program at three of our elementary schools. Why computer science? Well, that's a great question. Um, let me answer that in stages. <laughs> Um, first of all, I think it's a continuation of what this school district is about, and that is trying to prov provide engaging pathways for our students. Mm -hmm. um, that's not something that's new to my tenure here as mm -hmm. a superintendent, nor is it something that's very new. We've been doing that for at least about 10 years as yeah. a school district. So I would say this is the next step. That's part of the why. Um, why computer science specifically? Um, I think partially because the notion of coding and the notion of computer science is becoming more and more foundational mm -hmm. for students today than for students when you were young or certainly <laughs> when I was young. So I, I, think, I think that's part of the rationale. And then the other part I would say is in congruence with our strategic plan, we want to provide equity and access to programs. And, and uh, this will be part of that equity and access to uh, highly engaging programs. Wonderful. Um, we're trying to get, um, as you've said a couple of times, young girls interested in coding. We're trying to expand, um, you know, the the diversity of students who are participating in our specialized schools as well. Um, this kind of does that for us. Right. From the from the getting getting young ladies involved, uh, it was interesting. Um, a few months ago now, I was at Washington High School for an hour of code. Mm -hmm. And for those listeners that might not know what Hour of Code is, it's an hour in the high schools where we bring females together mm -hmm. and we bring role models, female role models from around the community in to talk to them about potentially looking at the computer science pathway. Um, there are few, relatively few, females in this industry. Um, luckily for us, we have some good role models in several of our, our local um, uh, corporations. Sure. At Hour of Code, I had an opportunity to listen to five females in the computer science industry, and those five were at the, the following three companies. They were at Eros, mm -hmm. they were at uh, Raven Industries. I would have guessed that. Yeah, and they were at Citibank. Okay. So five of them. I had a chance to talk to three of the five females there and ask them if we were doing enough in the area of computer science. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, they're, they're a little bit biased, sure. but of course they said no. <laughs> And I said, when should we start computer science instruction? And two of them said at the elementary level. And one of them was so specific to say at kindergarten. So it's a, a little bit of a response there. But the, the good news about computer science instruction is we're teaching it to all boys and all girls mm -hmm. beginning in kindergarten. And so everybody's going to have um, an equal access from a gender perspective to computer science instruction. Right. So that's good. You talked also about the ethnicity mm -hmm. piece, and when I look at the programs that we already run, uh, the Spanish Immersion Challenge Center, Eugene Fields uh, Arts Plus School, mm -hmm. and um, All City, four great, incredibly engaging programs. But when I looked at those through the strategic planning process from an ethnic standpoint mm -hmm. and from a socioeconomic standpoint, I see that the number of non-white students in those schools is significantly um, l lower mm -hmm. than the number of non-white students across our population. Right. From a r free and reduced price lunch perspective, I see that those on free and reduced price lunches also aren't represented in those specialty school programs as they are across all of our elementaries. Right. So we want to do something that's, that that. Um, is specific to that equity and access piece too from both an ethnicity perspective and a socioeconomic perspective. So we think the Code to the Future, the, the, the name of the vendor that we're looking, looking at um, partnering with in, uh, in computer science in general is something that will help, help us address those strategic plan needs. Wonderful. You've seen uh, Code to the Future in action. You've had a chance to visit some classrooms in other parts of the country that are using this model, and it's pretty amazing. The young people pick things up so quickly, and it, this doesn't change our curriculum, 
what it does is, is integrate activities uh, with coding into all, our already existing curriculum. Is that right? Yeah, that's very well put. Um, this will certainly be new for our teachers who teach mm -hmm. it, but they won't have to learn an entirely new curriculum. Sure. English is still going to be English. Math is still going to be math. Social studies is still going to be social studies, et cetera. So from that perspective, no change. What will change is the activities involved to help enhance math instruction, science instruction, English instruction. Just as in Spanish immersion, we use the, the existing um, school district curriculum, we'll do the same with computer science. Okay, it's just the method of delivery that changes a bit. Correct. Awesome. Well, lots of exciting things to come with computer science immersion and Code to the Future. I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot more about that in the days and weeks to come. Thanks for joining us on Envision.